at certain points when looking at a current generation, it seems difficult to imagine some of the best Pokemon around ever falling off, especially if they've been doing their thing for a while. It seems like no matter what Game Freak throws at them, they'll be effective. Think Pokemon like Landorus T and Ferrothorn, while some like Gliscor even get better over the generation. However, Game Freak famously makes fools of us as they invent new versions of power creep that often upturn much of the previous understanding of the game, and new generations thus send previous tier titans toppling from their throne into tiers they would have made mincemeat of at the peak of their powers. The immense power creep of Scarlet and Violet has been particularly riotous in this regard, making history in ways that officially made many competitive veterans feel not just old, but ancient. Today we're exploring 7 Pokemon that have dropped to tiering status we never would have expected them to, the kind that would have been incomprehensible had you pitched the idea to someone during a generation where they were going strong. I bet if these mons were fed well, they wouldn't have fallen off years later. So feed yourself well and conveniently because this video is sponsored by Factor. Look, if you're working adults like us, which my demographics data says you are, you probably find it hard to fit time in to actually make food. For us here at FSG, we spend a lot of time recording and editing these videos, and we would rather not break the bank getting takeout every other day. Luckily, Factor is here to save the day and our time. Unlike other meal kits out there, Factor is already pre-cooked. This spring, eat stress-free with delicious, never frozen, chef crafted, dietitian approved meals in just two minutes. No more prep work, no more cleaning up pots and pans after you cook. Honestly, that's probably my least favorite part when I meal prep. But now with Factor, it's just delivered to your doorstep and you microwave it. And they've got a wide selection of meals too, with over 35 meals to choose from per week, with popular options such as Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. So if you want awesome, ready to eat meals weekly and also support the channel to help us produce more content, Get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders using my link. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Starting with a base 100 pixie that used to be a staple of higher tiers of play, we're chronicling Shaman's drastic drop off for the land form anyway. Shaman Sky has always been among the most insufferable of Ubers. Shaman, on the other hand, started its debut generation in Yu Yu and was quite good without being overwhelming, as long as Crobat, an amazing counter to it, was dominating the tier. Once Crobat left, so too did Shaman, as it began running circles around everything else. It eventually rose to OU proper once Latias and Salamence were banned and thrived as part of the Yu Yu style fire water grass cores that took over OU. Its offensive defensive synergy with Heatran and the tier's many waters like Suicune was superb, and whether offensive with life orb or more utility focused with the stall shredding leech seed protect sets, it was great. Scarf sets later emerged as excellent late game cleaners, which also offered unique, superb utility in Healing Wish. Shaman being a pure grass type and packing the aforementioned base 100 stats across the board wasn't a shock to see in lower tiers, starting with Gen 5's UU and even featuring an RU in Gen 6 and 7, though it proved too much for the tier in the former generation. It took Gen 8 off, and the idea of it dropping to NU wouldn't have shocked anyone, but in Gen 9, it's rocketed past NU. It hasn't even been good enough for the lowest official tier, PU. Grass types like Whimsicott, Decidueye, and Sceptile? Sure. Shaman? Nah. It's untiered, meaning it's actively recommended for players to not use. A big problem is that Shaman's move pool hasn't really been updated with the times. Its old bag of tricks simply isn't good enough in these more modern metagames, despite its stats. It is shocking to see something with a stat spread previously considered the pinnacle of all-around stability to fall so far as to have its use outright recommended against. But that's Pokemon. Latios was incredibly dominant in his debut generation of Ubers, ranking as either the number one or number two Pokemon alongside its sister Latias, depending on who you ask. It brandished its signature Soul Dew, which bestowed the boost equivalent to a Calm Mind through Generation 6, to tremendous effect as it outsped, outbulked, and overpowered pretty much the entire metagame. It wasn't quite as dominant in Gen 4 Ubers, but it also used its amazing speed to unleash its terrifying new stab Draco Meteor, shredding even Steels, which already greatly feared its covers like Thunder on Rain Teams 
or hidden power fire on Sun. Latios joined OU in Generation 5 and completely dominated it, eventually rising to become the best, most threatening Pokemon in the tier, and many believe this should have been banned as well, that it warped the tier to an unhealthy degree. We can almost consider it an honorary three-time Uber. The cry for its removal was so powerful and sustained. Latios continued OU excellence despite the emerging fairy type and the nerf to Draco Meteor, Surf, and Hidden Power in Generation 6, always remaining a staple of the tier for its offensive prowess, as well as its utility in Defog and checking Keldeo, Mega Charizard Y, and sometimes Landorus Incarnate before its ban. With a Choice Scarf, it was even a solid revenge killer for Dragon Dance Mega Charizard X, while tricking the item onto walls like Clefable. It was the rare case of the base form being better for its team than its Mega, though this changed in Generation 7. Base Latios actually dropped to Yu Yu, where it was banned immediately, literally in less than an hour, but it wasn't doing much in OU. Mega Latios, on the other hand, despite not technically earning the OU title, was an absolutely superb Pokemon, really making the most of its increased bulk, both with defensive utility against beasts like Heatran and Kartana, and with the extra tankiness allowing it to fire off its powerful attacks more easily in the face of would-be checks like Clefable, which Mega Latios powered through with Psychic without truly fearing the return Moonblast. Generation 8 saw Latios lose the Mega, but it was once again hilariously overpowered for UU standards, especially with the significant boost to its move pool in Aura Sphere and Mystical Fire. But in Gen 9, it has finally come to settle in Yuyu, and like Garchomp, this drop isn't quite extreme, but it is incredibly notable for a Pokemon of Latios' stature, especially because its move pool got majorly buffed again. It now has a switch move in Flip Turn, and its signature move Luster Purge has finally been buffed, gaining 95 base power that puts it ahead of Psychic, and keeping the 50% special defense drop rate, making it an utter terror. For this super buff Latios, which can also terrestrialize by the way, to be truly at home in Yuyu seems strange. Well, at least what isn't strange is the fact that it's absolutely incredible. One of the best Pokemon in the tier. Terra Steel Latios is particularly absurd because not only does it love the benefits of Steel defensively, it also avoids non-Mold Breaker Earthquakes thanks to Levitate, and its stabs ensure fighting and fire types won't be trying to scare it either. Latios as a functional member of Yuyu seems a little unreal. Mew was the second Pokemon to ever become an Uber, right after Mewtwo, of course. With its peerless move pool and its superb base 100 stats across the board, it was an immense threat on offense and defense, hitting hard and fast while tanking hits and providing all the utility you could ask for. It excelled as a bulky, healing, speedy Swords Dance threat in the first two generations of Ubers, especially threatening with its brutal explosion. It was outclassed in pretty much every way in Gen 3 Ubers, and was even briefly tried in OU a few times, but its collective traits were too much for the tier, and it thus remained barred from the standard meta. It gained new life in Gen 4 Ubers for its utility, mostly as a Stealth Rock lead distinguishing itself from Deoxys with U-Turn, Good Bulk, and Explosion, though occasionally it would also act as the widely despised Baton Pass variant, using its phase-blocking Taunt and Bulk especially, alongside partner Mewtwo's dual screens, to send both double speed and either attack or special attack to Groudon or Dialga, which usually ended the game on the spot. Some players wondered if Power Creep might not make it Power palatable in OU by now, but then again, nobody was particularly thrilled about the idea of taking on Mew, whether it was Taunt, Will-O-Wisp, Nasty Plot, or any of the million variations in between. Then Generation 5 came around, unleashed a whirlwind of power creep on the poker world, and it finally happened. Actually, more than just the it you'd expect of Mew dropping to OU. It actually fell out of Ubers and landed in underuse. Mew's base 100 stats across the board were, of course, never going to remain as stellar as they were earlier on, but it wasn't even that which made its appearance in this tier seem so strange. It was the endless move pool. Still, despite its seemingly endless diversity, the fact was that Mew, while it could certainly throw a curveball or two, was mostly going to stick to certain sets, and those sets didn't pack the power nor bulk to be truly overwhelming, as Yu Yu now resembled the Gen 4 OU that Mew had already been discussed as potentially being in line with. Though the Stallbreaker's tankiness was at times incredible, Mew was nowhere near overbearing for Yu Yu, and it also enjoyed an excellent career in OU simultaneously. Mew continued on this trajectory for the next several generations. It returned as OU proper in Gen 6, its Defog and Volt Switch qualities offering unique support, then went back to an excellent UU role in Gen 7, while still having solid use in OU. And in Gen 8, it was once again a bona fide OU Pokemon, boosted by its new access to spikes and knocking off any heavy-duty boots from Pokemon trying to avoid them. Alternatively, it could run an infuriating Cosmic Power Stored Power set that was one of the scariest sweepers in the tier. However, it's now Gen 9, and Mew has 
tumbled out of OU again, but it hasn't returned to UU this time. It hasn't even landed in RU, though it is quite good there, with Nasty Plot psychic noises and Terra Fairy draining kisses posing a significant threat. It's not even RU by usage. It is all the way down in NU. Oh, sure, it's quite good there, though by the logic that brought this video into existence, we must prepare for the day where that will be the case. However, for now, it is surreal to see Mew of all things all the way down in NU alongside Pokemon like, with no disrespect intended, Nine Tails and Tentacruel, to take two other Gen 1 examples. It'd be one thing if it were ripping through the tier, but it is simply a very solid, balanced Pokemon in it. It's not that Mew is in a lower tier, it is that it is suddenly this low after such a long stretch of remaining as high tier as it was. It was solidly OU in the previous generation after all. Between its tremendous stab combination, alongside great power further boosted by Sword Stance, an incredible speed tier, and phenomenal natural bulk, Garchomp was considered a quote-unquote perfect Pokemon by many. Its uber status in Gen 5's Black and White 1 was largely a product of Sand Veil, with Rough Skin being unavailable at that time, but it was still an incredible threat. And in Gen 4, its offensive onslaught was monstrously busted even without the possibility of missing Ice Beams against it. It wasn't just an honorary uber either. No, it was one of the most ferocious threats in the tier. Its amazing speed tier allowing it to get the jump on so much of the rest of the tier, making each of its sets excellent. Scarf was one of the best revenge killers and late game cleaners, while Source Dance was incredibly fast for such a threat, and with Salak Berry added that superb cleaning capability. Even when fairy types came along, Garchomp didn't lose much of its edge. Sure, it couldn't spam outrages freely, but fairy types didn't exactly want to take its mighty stab earthquakes. It also developed a consistent role as one of the best support Pokemon in the game, with its typing also doubling as defensive value in conjunction with its aforementioned superb bulk really shining when invested, able to tank all manner of attacks, mostly physical, and supporting its team with Stealth Rock, while punishing many popular contact moves, notably the incredibly annoying U-turn with the combination of Rough Skin and Rocky Helmet. It continued oscillating in this vein of both offensive threat and offensive glue in Gen 6, 7, and 8. In Gen 7, it was particularly fierce with Z-moves, while Gen 8 gave it Scale Shot acting as a pseudo dragon dance that really upped its threat level. In Gen 9, Garchomp seemed poised to be better than ever, with terrestrialization for its offensive sets and gaining spikes for support. The very idea of Spike's Garchomp in any other generation would have shaken its respective tier. It would have been even more spam than it already was for such incredible support. Whether a bulkier utility spiker or a fast-paced user of both rocks and spikes, it would have been even easier to slot Garchomp on a team and wring incredible value from it. In Gen 9 though, spikes were everywhere though. No need to use a Pokemon that was increasingly unable to keep up in a metagame, newly dominated by a ground type named Great Tusk. And later on, another ground type, Gliscor, which had also gained spike. And sure, Gliscor was banned, but it also came back. And even if it hadn't, Chomp just didn't fit in. Heavy Duty Boots played a major role in this too. Getting multiple layers so easily was nowhere as impactful as it would have been even in the fog heavy generations when everything was already gearing up to ignore hazards including the Great Tusk that was also everywhere and ready to rapid spin them away, while also packing Ice Spinner alongside its amazing physical bulk to effortlessly beat Garchomp. Wrong as it seemed, Garchomp did eventually drop to Yuyu, which alongside Heatran doing the same, though Heatran eventually rose back to OU, caused a real pang in the soul of every Generation 4 player. The one positive was that Garchomp eventually got banned from Yuyu for being overwhelming with Scale Shot, but still, the fact that it even landed there. Deoxys Defense was a fantastic uber Pokemon in his debut generation. Spamming spikes, a Soul Dew Laddie Twin threatening knockoff, and 32 PP recover, as well as the occasional taunt to stifle bulky teams, as well as offensive threats. It was a superb choice for many balanced squads. Though overlooked for quite some time, it eventually revealed itself as a great Pokemon in Gen 4 Ubers as well. Rocking a solid mid-game Stealth Rock Spike set, using its hit-taking capability over Deoxys Speed to find opportunities to stack multiple layers 
and spread Thunder Wave, while its speedy taunt shut down slower teams. It did feature some contentious placements below Ubers, though. Deoxys will never drop from Ubers again in any form, the player base swore after Generation 6. If even the addition of a buff to Fog hadn't been enough to contain the aliens' overwhelming spike-stacking antics, they wouldn't let themselves make the same mistake ever again. They had been fooled too many times in one form or another. At first, it was Deoxys' speed in Gen 4, but as for the subject Deoxys' defense, it had actually dropped, like Mew, from Ubers to Yu Yu in Generation 5. Surely it was more than fine then. Except, unlike Mew, the player base eventually realized how absurdly good Deoxys' defense was at stacking hazards, easily on par with Deoxys' speed, and Deoxys' defense eventually found itself back in the Uber tier after a resounding OU ban vote in Black and White 2. Things continued in this vein in XY, as now realizing Deoxys' defense was far from outclassed by Deoxys' speed, players used them almost interchangeably, and the two were suspected and banned simultaneously. The lesson was learned, and neither was given even a minute of OU in Generation 7. Then they took Generation 8 off, but that was also the generation the hazard-ignoring heavy-duty boots were introduced. If there was anything that could quell Deoxys' spike stacking, it was this item. Yes, knockoff threatened boots, but Deoxys wouldn't be able to force knockoffs on everything holding the item, which was a lot of Pokemon, and so with its return to Gen 9, this is indeed what has happened. Deoxys' speed has returned to OU, but Deoxys' defense isn't nearly as lucky. Deoxys' speed, in addition to hazards, can run an excellent offensive set. Deoxys' defense, on the other hand, is pretty inextricably tied to its hazard stacking, and thus not only failed to find a niche in OU, but UU as well, leading to the rather stupefying concept of an RU Deoxys' defense becoming cold, hard reality. And you know what's truly insane? It's not even that good. Deoxys' defense is a decent RU Pokemon, but it can't really hold true to its name and act as too effective of a wall, as its low HP stat sadly betrays its titanic defenses. Recover being knocked down to 8 PP doesn't help matters, though it wouldn't make too much of a difference. It mostly prevents Terra DLD from being a good wall, though being so reliant on Terra also wouldn't be great. Even the possibility of terroring DLD, while potentially intriguing, especially terroring into a ghost type, thus to block Rapid Spin from Cyclozar, isn't too enticing given how you could generally use the Terra on a more efficient Pokemon than one who isn't offering much value defensively, and is only providing hazards in a world populated by heavy duty boots at every corner. And yeah, Rapid Spin Cyclozar being as excellent and popular as it is, isn't helping matters either. What makes this particularly stupefying is that DLD now has access to a switch move in the buff Teleport, which would be utterly incredible in other generations, but it simply lacks the defensive profile to use it particularly meaningfully. It's definitely decent, but not much more than that. And it is utterly bizarre to utter these words vis a vis Deoxys defense in the RU tier. Here's a double whammy. Thunderous dominated its inaugural generation. In Black and White 1, its incarnate form, at that time the only known form, terrorized the OU metagame so badly with its Nazi plot set that it wound up getting banned alongside fellow menace to society Excadrill. Then in Black and White 2, Thunderous Therian hit the scene, and despite its lower speed, blasted through the tier with even greater power, especially when it agility. It didn't get banned, but it did have several top players proclaiming its brokenness. Incarnate's prankster Thunderwave then held the chaotic metagame of Earth early X and Y OU together, and it was itself a massive threat as well between a buffed knockoff and good old Nasty Plot. Some considered it broken until Oras hit, and even then it continued its excellence. Therian also had a great OU niche between its Volt Switch blocking Volt Absorb and its Ballad Shredding power, and when it dropped to Yu Yu, it thrashed the tier with absurd ease. The pair continue on similar trajectories of excellence over the next several generations. Both were banned for destroying Yu Yu in Generation 7, while Incarnate got banned from the tier again in 8, which is the gen that Therian finally found a non-broken yet still quality place in the metagame. Both of these must keep in mind the blow the pair received with the loss of Hidden Power too. Now in Gen 9, the pair can somewhat replicate Hidden Power's coverage with Terrestrialization, but the power levels are so sky high that neither of them have achieved even UU tiering status. Therian actually has the upper hand for once, as it has the higher rank of the two in RU. Yep, that's right. This base 145 special attack stat behemoth is an RU Pokemon now. Oh, it's no victim of the Regigiga 
Mega Sturm either. It's still a fast Pokemon with good typing and a great move pool. That's just where we're at now. Meanwhile, the speedier variant, still packing plenty of strength, is now NU. Tier 1 doesn't expect them to maintain their initial dominance at the same threshold forever, but considering what the NU tier has been in the past, this feels genuinely uncanny. At least Therian is absolutely killer in RU, but Incarnate is quote-unquote nearly pretty good in NU. We've definitely crossed some sort of metaphysical border at this point. You knew this was coming, you knew it to be real and to make perfect sense, and yet Tyranitar's fall from grace is still tragic. It was actually briefly Yu Yu in Generation 8, the gen that took its mighty pursuit from it, and players were similarly shaken. However, because it's Tyranitar, it rolls back to OU and showed just how much of an absolute beast it was without pursuit utility off the strength of its mighty choice band set. Take away pursuit? Okay, that means more bandit coverage it can smack you with. However, Generation 9 OU seems to have gone out of its way to be as hostile to Titar as possible. So much so that even the incredible addition of Knockoff, a move that would have been mind-bogglingly absurd to have on Tyranitar in literally any other generation, can't make up for it. It has a decent niche in the tier now, but it's incredibly far away from OU proper. Tyranitar was one of the most defining OU Pokemon for so long that it feels genuinely wrong to not see the tiering status next to its name. It's unique typing, incredible bulk, superb offenses, endless move pool, and of course, post-GSC, Sandstream, and there was just about always something it could do for your team. And it did so many somethings that it was constantly among the most important Pokemon you could use. And in the metagame at large, and this was independent of Pursuit, though that of course was immeasurably impactful and defining in Gens 2 through 7. It wasn't just an OU monster either. It was repeatedly superb even all the way up in Ubers. Now though is a far cry from when its permanent Sand single-handedly shaped Gens 3 through 5, or when even without its Mega, it continued to thrive in Gens 6 and 7. Though it's excellent Mega certainly helped quite a bit. Instead, Tyranitar has fallen harder than Tokyo when Godzilla appears. For quite some time, it was an Aryu. Not Yuyu, Aryu. Yes, it has risen to Yuyu now. Thank goodness for at least some respite from this terrible tumble that sent shocks through the hearts of trainers everywhere. But while dropping to Yuyu is one thing, dropping past Yuyu is something else entirely. It'd be different if it briefly dropped to Aryu and completely dominated the tier at least, letting the lowly metagame know its power. But no, it was perfectly fine. This list isn't really ready ranked, but if there was one constant you could count on regarding OU, it was that Tyranitar would be there. And even when its confidence was shaken briefly in the pursuit list Generation 8, it returned with a vengeance, rightfully reminding everyone of its greatness. Sadly, Gen 9 has put an end to that, and Titar's downfall is the saddest, most shocking of them all. And that's it! There are of course many other Pokemon we could nominate for such a list, temporary placements for instance, like Terrakion's hilarious short time in NU, or the time where OU was so populated by grounds that even the mighty Heatran found itself in UU, though it's since returned to standard play. Let us know which Pokemon of this elk you'd nominate to rank among these seven fallen, and we'll see you in the next one. Who knows, in the future we might have to revisit this premise when something like Necrozma Dawn Wings finds itself in UU. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more more. Be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And thank you so much to our Platinum Tier Patrons. Thank you so much to Raven Daytona Ring, Sorazan Croxon, Stoneface Colin, Bingleton, Ray Ray, Daniel Isbeast, Glitcherton, Alex Sabo, Funky, and Chica Chihyo for their support of our videos. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.